Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guest and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. It is, uh, we're recording this in December. We're a couple of weeks, uh, 10 days, 11 days before Christmas. Um, I've got back with me on our program today, uh, Dan Gleisner of Car Real Estate. Dan, say good morning. Good morning. Hey, happy so happy to so happy to have you back on here. You're, you're either our first or second guest. Um, Dan, you and I have known each other for several years. Um, give me a little bit of, uh, give our, our audience a little bit of background about you and then tell us a little bit about Car Real Estate. Yeah, so I've been in the dental industry now 13 years, which sounds crazy. I started with Henry Shine as a field sales consultant. Uh, selling goop and goo in technology. So I understand the, the dental world from that aspect. And then uh, I've been in real estate now uh, for a while and I've managed Colorado and I managed the West Coast as well. So I get exposed to a whole bunch of different types of real estate for, for healthcare. And then quick background on CARB, we're the nation's leading provider of commercial real estate services for healthcare tenants and buyers only. So currently we're representing thousands of healthcare practices with their lease and purchase negotiations. So just a quick summary of what we are. We're a commercial real estate firm, first and foremost, that gets lost, that specializes in dental and other healthcare professionals as tenant buyers only, meaning we don't represent landlords or sellers. That's incredibly important. So, so important. So there's no conflicts of interest. Our job talk, is... Sorry, real quickly, Dan, talk about that conflict of interest. Why is that important? I, I, and I know you, you know you do real estate every single day, but why is that? Why would someone who's not familiar with this hasn't leased several properties, why would they want to make sure that they work with an agent who isn't representing landlords? Yeah. So if, if you drive by a space that you like and you see a, an advertisement sign saying for lease called John, John has a relationship with the landlord. Their fiduciary responsibility, legal responsibility is to protect the landlord. So they will they will say they can help you, but they're going to have John. They're going to have John's going to have the landlord's best interest in mind, not your best interest. So they're trying to get the highest dollar amount out of you as a potential tenant with as little amount of concessions as possible. So let me understand this. In that situation, um, and I believe this is residential in a lot of states too, but in that situation in commercial, it's actually the agent who's representing the landlord would be breaking the law if they helped you get a better deal on the property. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll send you a, a, a disclosure saying that they represent the landlord. So their rear end is covered. And then it's just game on for them. Sure. So, but they can have it, but people will sign a disclosure. No one reads them, right? Right. And there are very few people do, but they'll be acting like they're your friend this the entire time, right? Yeah. And it's in their best interest to be friends with you so they can essentially rake you over the coals. And I wish, I wish the world was not like this, but it totally is. This is how they all make their money. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so car only works with, um, people looking to lease properties or to buy properties. Um, tell me a little bit more about why healthcare specific, why is that important to work with someone who's in? Uh, yeah, this is actually a, a, fun, a fun story. Uh, there's several reasons, but the reason why we started this as a company uh, was our owner, Colin, was on the landlord side. He was working for a national firm and one of his clients was a landlord that had a medical office building and just happened to be a lot of dentists in this building. And every year, this landlord would take advantage of dentists on their lease renewals. So he saw an opportunity to come into market and represent just the dentist because 80% of all dentists lease space. Of that 80%, I bet you more than half don't have representation, especially on a lease renewal because they don't know that they can have representation, somebody in their corner. And the niche was created from exposure of doctors getting taken advantage of. So it's 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 a really fun industry. and. It's, it's paid off really well. So I know there's, there's the negotiation side and that's really important. Um, um, but there's also just understanding the dynamics and what dentists need. Correct. I mean, yeah. if, if, uh, you know, if I'm a licensed real estate agent, how am I supposed to, and I've never worked with dentists. I have no idea what goes into, um, that process, what the steps are, what it looks like. Um, so I get it. I think our audience gets it too. Um, Dan, I want, I want you to jump into kind of what we want to talk about a little bit today is values of property, values of leases. I know my personal office space, I think our leases do in about seven or eight months. 
Um, I've been paying every single month, but I can know looking around my complex that um, not everyone is. Um, so there's a little open space here. So I'm guessing properties have dropped in my specific space. Um, and this is due to COVID again, it's December um, of 2020. Um, tell me what you're seeing out there and what's going on as far as healthcare spaces and landlords and, and lease rates and what have you. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to this. So you're right. In your specific space, you're in an office space uh, in the South Metro of Denver. Office spaces right now are suffering, right? It's the, the oil and gas companies, the marketing firms, the attorney firms that have all realized that they can work virtual. So uh, we're not going to have a dramatic impact on the immediate economy because most of these leases are three to five years. So once these leases roll in three to five years, a lot of them aren't going to renew. Or if they do renew, they're going to go for a sh smaller space or a shorter time frame. This is going to have a, that will have a dramatic impact on the office space market. It's counterintuitive, but in the medical office space, medical office space is filling up rapidly. And the reason why it is filling up rapidly is that these guys, the landlords that are own these buildings, offer a significant amount of concessions for especially tenant improvement allowance. And right now, the banking industry is is not normal. So it's a little harder to get money. So if landlords can offer massive concessions to get into their space, tenants are going that way. And then if we look at retail, retail is 50-50. If you're downtown Denver retail, it's not awesome right now. But if you're in the suburbs, things are still okay. Uh, it's still a competitive market. Restaurants aren't opening <laughs> because sure. it's not the right time to open up. But these spaces are still competitive in markets. But I get to see a whole bunch of different perspectives. Like I was, I was just in, in Phoenix, Scottsdale area last week, and the Class A retail centers are still hyperly competitive. You know, counter that to downtown San Francisco. Downtown San Francisco is a ghost town. Where I mean, these lease rates were as competitive as Manhattan lease rates. I mean, everybody wanted to be there, but that financial district, that whole sector downtown, is is completely shut. Sure, so it's. It's, it's crazy. So it's market by market and it's, it really is dependent on where you're at and what you're looking for, but it's COVID hasn't reared its head fully of the ramifications in the real estate market. And I don't think it will for another probably, you know, two to five years. And that's because people, a lot of people are in their lease if there's nothing you can do, right? I mean, you can bail on it and people are doing that, of course. I don't think you're going to see any medical or dental practices do that, right? No. It's kind of it, hard to pack up all of your equipment in the middle of the night and run for it. And it's also hard to do dentistry uh, through Zoom, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you can't do it in your garage. Right. But we could see, you, you think it is possible that some of these retail spaces and these more uh, medical office spaces, you could see those drop in value over the next several years? Yeah, well, it really depends on what the shutdown restriction is going to be on restaurants uh, for the next couple of months. Because that first shutdown, it was very, very hard, but the government supplemented income. So that was sure. huge. Right. Now we don't know if there's another bailout for these restaurants and if this is really busy season for them. So if they're not able to survive this, they might see a lot, lot more bail, unfortunately. Right. So Dan, let's jump into, we know every market's different. We know every situation is different. When is the time to start talking to someone like you? So whether you're looking to uh, build a practice for the first time, you're, what you want to do a startup or you currently are in a leased space, um, when is the right time to contact you? And when is it too late to contact you? In other words, um, obviously, I, and this is my recommendation. If, if your lease expires next month, you should still hire a professional to help you. So I'm not saying don't hire a professional, um, but I'm sure it's got to affect negotiating a little bit, right? <laughs> yes. Timing's everything, man, in, in negotiation. So if you hold the time card, you're going to win. So uh, ideal timing is 12 to 18 months out. I mean, that's perfect. If you want to build something from the ground up, it's, that's two years. Uh, but, you know, ground up construction is, is not for everyone. Right. Uh, and when you said it's too late, uh, it's never too late. You just got to cater your expectations uh, because it's I do think it's important. Like I said, if you're a month out, unless there's a perfect turnkey option right around the corner from where you're currently at, there's really no leverage. Right. The landlord knows that they have you. So but at the same time, we can try to still try to mitigate some of what the landlord's trying to get. Uh, through proper negotiation. So even if it's, you know, a month out, it, it's a month out. We just have to work with what's in front of us, but it's, we can't move heaven and earth with, with a month like we could with 12 months. Got it. Understood. Um, 
So Dan, I want to uh, have our audience reach out to you. Um, best way to contact you is through the website. Is that correct? At uh, car.us and that's C-A-R-R dot U-S, correct? Correct. Yeah. And you, you can answer questions on a national level, right? Or put people uh, in contact with someone locally that can help them. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I love looking at the national market. You know, I specifically handle the West Coast. So if anybody's on the West Coast, uh, we can talk about those markets in detail. And, you know, we have over 120 licensed brokers across the nation. So I can get you in contact with a local agent uh, if, you know, it happens to be in Alabama or Florida, New York, whatever, whatever it happens to be. But at a global scale, I could talk to anybody and answer questions. And I'm happy to. Our services are always free to our clients, which sounds impossible, uh, but it's but it's true. Yeah, no, I get it. And I, I you know, I've. I have personal experience uh, working with Dan and he's, he's definitely helped some of my clients and I appreciate that very much. And we appreciate you coming on the show. Um, Car.us.com. Dan Gleisner. Dan, thanks so much. That was awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.